The world is our oyster. We need to explore to understand, not just the mainland of Earth, but into the corners of our own planet, what lies beyond Earth, and just how far life can stretch into the universe. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be taking a look at three discoveries as we travel from Earth into the solar system and out into the universe. A hidden radioactive heat source underneath Earth seems to be melting. It is no secret that our poles, both north and south, are suffering from ice losses. What with climate change and several other factors, we are losing icy land at an alarming rate, encouraging scientists to gather as much data as possible so that we can predict what will come next and stay one step ahead. Well, it seems that this mission for data has been somewhat successful with a 2018 study revealing a large source of geothermal heat underneath East Antarctica which we have not considered in our icy loss predictions. The finding was first prompted by a rather strange radar reading. An aircraft flew over the Antarctic, taking radar readings as far as 3 kilometers into the ice. While this mission was impressive, it got more interesting when the aircraft detected something somewhat surprising. The ice was melting from the bottom up, melting the base of the Antarctic ice sheets. This melted water then drains and in turn fills up subglacial lakes. The international team put together researching this say that at this point in time, the geothermal heat is not a factor in this ice loss, though in the future this impact could become more significant, causing faster melting as time goes on. Lead researcher Tom Jordan from the British Antarctic Survey said, the process of melting we observe has probably been going on for thousands or maybe even millions of years and isn't directly contributing to ice sheet change. He continued to explain that the future impact could well be a different story, however, as the extra water that will be in the ice sheet bed as more ice melts could make the entire region more sensitive to the factors we know contribute to issues like this, such as climate change. The current theory the experts have is that radioactive rocks and hot water coming from inside of the Earth's crust could be adding to this melting. This theory has been drawn from observations made before and up to 750 kilometers inland from the shore. Luckily for us and the team, we have more than these surface observations. The Polar Gap project that this research falls under aims to fill in those details we just do not know based on satellite imaging specifically from the now-retired GOCE, or Gravity Field and Steady State Ocean Circulation Explorer satellite. GOCE was originally used to measure the changes in gravitational pull in Antarctica and mapped terrain in the process. By figuring out where there are sneakily hidden contours and pockets of warmth beneath the ice sheet, scientists can improve the accuracy of their predictions as they aim to figure out what is going on for Antarctica in its future. Now, Combining the data from the two studies, it seems the most likely explanation is that there are hot rocks and heated water aiding the ice melt, an important contributor we can consider in future explanations. Further supporting this idea is a 2017 study which revealed a number of heat sources underground within West Antarctica too. Some of these studies have also announced that there are possible further volcanoes in some Antarctic zones, and the heat from active volcanoes would, of course, melt ice. So these geothermal hot rock heat sources cannot be blamed for all of the Antarctic ice melting. However, it does mean that the rapidly increasing pace of the melting ice is not entirely human fault. It does mean we need to endeavor to be more environmentally conscious than ever and make sure that we are working with our planet, not against it. Samples from asteroid Roigu are the most primitive material we've found. Asteroids can sound really frightening. After all, we know what happened to the dinosaurs. However, they hold plenty of valuable research material. One asteroid, a carbon-filled near-Earth asteroid 162173 Roigu, seems to contain the most primitive material within our solar system. Tests at two different laboratories have confirmed. Deborah Domingue from the Planetary Science Institute explained that the asteroid contains hydrated materials and signs of organics from early on in the formation of the solar system. Collecting this sample from Roigu without analyzing it at all is a huge milestone in itself. 
Scientists have long thought that studying remains from an asteroid would be more than useful. Though falling through the Earth's atmosphere destroys a lot of meteoric material, and when we do get meteorites land, they are often too damaged and scorched to conduct research from. Therefore, collecting samples becomes much more difficult. Scientists need to find a way to bring samples down to Earth from up in space. So far, samples from the Moon, Comet 81P or WILD-2, and asteroid 25143 Itakawa have all been obtained that way, and now Roigu-2. Hayabusa Mission 1 somewhat failed, delivering less than a milligram of dust from Itakawa, but Hayabusa 2 returned an impressive 5.4 gram sample from Roigu. Most of the results found from analyzing the data confirmed what was already thought, though some of the material's properties were somewhat surprising. The sample proved to be incredibly porous, with an average bulk density far lower than any meteorite found on Earth. Researchers say that this makes sense as to why we do not see much meteoric material make it to Earth, since porous materials would not survive falling through the atmosphere. This asteroid is incredibly primitive, and researchers hope these samples will change the way we view planet formation to be a little more accurate. With more samples ready to be collected, Hopefully more results will continue to confirm what we think we know. Astronomers detect water in one of the oldest known galaxies. We are all aware that water is a pretty important substance, at least here on Earth. One of our oldest known galaxies, with a catchy name SPT-031158, has now had water detected in it. It is a staggering 12.88 billion light-years away from Earth, meaning that what we see through our telescope on Earth of this old galaxy is actually what it looked like 12.88 billion years ago, which scientists believe is just 1 billion years after the Big Bang. The current scientific estimate is that this old galaxy is just 780 million years old. This would mean that the stars can form at a quick pace, unlike a more mature galaxy which would have a slow rate of allowing stars to form. This first sighting of water on SPT-031158 has a double record breaker, as this is the oldest water that we have detected in the universe thus far, as well as the most distant from us here on Earth. The study made use of the Atacama Desert's Chile-based Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array. ALMA is a powerful radio telescope that works thanks to a grand total of 66 radio antennas. Trevani Jarugula, an astronomer at the University of Illinois and the principal investigator of the study, currently looking at the oldest galaxy's water, explained that the equipment used allowed the team to look at the molecular level, which is what let the team stumble across not only the water molecules, but also carbon monoxide. In a statement, Jaragula said, oxygen and carbon in particular are first-generation elements, and in the molecular forms of carbon monoxide and water, they are critical to life as we know it. SPT-031158 was first spotted by the ALMA telescope in Chile back in 2017. As of this point in time, we do not know of a larger galaxy from what is referred to as the ancient age. It is even more impressive, however, that SPT-031158's huge size seems to be growing, as it appears to be formed of two galaxies that are merging into one. Scientists have compared this to galaxies closer to us here on Earth. Even though we know it is older than those galaxies closer to us, our observations show it to be younger, due to the time it takes light to travel across great distances. One notable difference that has been drawn from comparisons is the increased gas and dust seen at this galaxy compared to the closer galaxies. Jaragula continued to explain the benefits of this research into SPT-031158, saying that we are able to observe the molecules of interest to see how the life-creating elements affected the way the early universe, meaning the universe shortly after the Big Bang, developed. We still do not know why there are these differences between older and newer galaxies, or why life-forming molecules are some of the most common and yet we have not found life, just that the life-forming molecules are forming at the earliest moment they can. So perhaps before long we will be taking a look at extraterrestrial life through the ALMA telescope. The research of the future lies ahead of us, from distant galaxies to our very own continents. 
we continue to unravel the puzzle one study at a time. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.